I'm in the booth with uh, Timothy Perfit from Two Canoes Software, and his goal is going to be to help me understand what the heck iBeacons actually is. Great, yeah, I'd be glad to explain it. Um, so iBeacons are small Bluetooth devices that allows an iPhone to um, understand proximity and context around it. So uh, a good example of that is the scavenger hunt we're doing here at the show is um, there's a bunch of signs up that has the 33 history of the Mac, and when you get close to it, it pops up a hint that's based on proximity to that beacon, and it gives them a hint to find the next sign. And once they complete all four signs, they've, they've completed the scavenger hunt. So uh, iBeacons is a piece of hardware, but it's using low, uh, low energy Bluetooth, I think, to talk to our iPhones, right? That's correct. It's low energy Bluetooth, and uh, it's, a, it's a, um, a something that Apple came up with, uh, introduced about a, six months ago, and they're little hardware devices. We produce a USB uh, powered um, iBeacon compatible product that you can plug in anywhere. Uh, any USB adapter into a computer, into an auxiliary port for Wi-Fi access point, anything like that. And it just starts broadcasting uh, the, some identifiers that your iPhone knows about so it's able to know how close it is to these beacons. Now, this is the part where I get confused. I thought it was using uh, an existing standard technology, but it was just Apple put an, uh, an API on it that, that that's what makes it iBeacons, is that correct? Um, so it's all uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, and Bluetooth Low Energy is basically attributes being published. So for example, you might have an energy sensor that you want to find out you know, what temperature it is in a room. So iBeacon leverages that. It's a, it's, a, it's a definition of how those attributes are. And what it does is it says, it just advertises these identifiers that your phone knows um, what those identifiers mean. It might mean that you're in the, in, right near the second stage like we are here right today. So if I walked by one of the iBeacons with an Android phone, would I be able to be notified if I had low, tooth, low energy Bluetooth? So what Apple's done is they've integrated those notifications into the OS. So with a, an Android device, yes, you would be to be able to do it because it's just Bluetooth, but it's not integrated into the core of the OS. So the app itself would have to be listening for the beacons. What Apple's done. So the developers on the Android side could make it where they could see them too. Exactly. Then there is a bunch of open source projects that um, provide that functionality for you. And since you can run background applications in Android, you can have that same kind of functionality. Apple has just introduced it to make it integrate into the OS immediately. Okay, so that sounds pretty useful. So from a consumer standpoint, uh, what should we be looking for from uh, Two Canoes software? Um, so from a consumer, consumer standpoint, we have a couple different apps that run on top of iBeacon. One is called GeoHopper. It's available in the iOS App Store. And it allows you to notify your friends and family whenever you're um, in range of a beacon or a geofence, as well as trigger web scripts, um, uh, tie into other services like If Then Then That, or any other ones, uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want to do. Um, and then we have a version for the Mac as well. And then we have a whole uh, range of software to help integrate into uh, app developers to integrate the solution into their stuff as well. Well, that sounds very good. So how would they, uh, how would they find you guys? Uh, we're at, the, for our proximity stuff, if you go to blue.io, it's B-L-E-U.io. And our main website for our company is twocanoes.com. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was great.